rig functions, graphing them. There's some nice things and there's some other things that, well, I'm not going to say aren't nice, but we're going to keep life simple on you this first day and we are basically only going to work with degrees today. Now I know it says right here, X is always in a radian measure and basically after today it's going to be. But I want you to be able to get a grip on this with something that's a little bit easier to comprehend and degrees are a little bit easier to comprehend than radians are. So that's the way we're going to start today. Now we have had some parts before where we've had a base graph and then we've shifted it directions or it's gotten wide, it's gotten skinny like with the parabolas when we were doing quadratics and things. This is the same way. When I have a sine function, a base sine graph, it looks like this, okay, it's waves like you'd see on a heart monitor or like what you would see with music notes or waves or things like that. Those are all types of sine and cosine curves. But some of the vocab in there is what we're going to have to talk about a little bit. Sine is always going to start at zero. That's never going to change. Okay? And what's going to happen is it's going to go through what's called a period. Now if you look down at the bottom of the page, and I'll come down, we'll talk about amplitude too. Any graph that you have, and we're only going to be dealing with sine and cosine, not tangent, not of any of the other inverses. Um, they're always going to have what's called a period of 360 degrees. Now that doesn't mean like a circle. What it means is how far is my curve going to go before it goes through a complete pattern start to finish. And here's what we mean by that. If I look at a base sine curve, okay, it starts at zero and it's going to hit a maximum point. It's going to come back to its original spot and then it's going to hit a minimum and then it's going to end. So what I just highlighted in red would be one period of the sine curve. So that period is 360 degrees or 2 pi. And we'll be talking more about pi tomorrow. But for now, 360 degrees is okay. The amplitude is how much height the curve gets. And again, on a base graph, my amplitude is going to be 1, which means it hits a maximum height of 1 but it goes to a minimum depth of negative one. But amplitude is always positive because, as I put down below here, it's the absolute value of A. Okay? It's the height of my curve. It's the x-axis to the maximum or to the minimum point. But it'll always be the same. It'll be like 1 to negative 1, 3 to negative 3. It won't move around to different places. So we've also got that same thing working here for a cosine curve. Now some of you may look at this, let me see if I can get them both in here, and say basically, Hardy, they look like the same thing. They just kind of got shifted over. And that basically is how this works. The difference is going to be where I'm starting. So here's one thing I will kind of let you in on. Do I want to do that here? I'll wait a little minute. Cosine is going to be starting up at 1 instead of 0. But otherwise, the pacing of it is going to go the same. It's going to start and it's going to go down, and keep going, and until it gets back to the top here, okay, that's what one cycle or one period of a cosine curve is going to look like. That's my, I guess we'll call it our base graph, if you wanted to call it that before. So, period's the same, amplitude's the same. Basically, the only difference is where it starts. Sine starts at zero, cosine tends to start at one. But is it always just going to be y equals cosine or sine of x? Well, of course not. Especially when we talk about this thing called amplitude or period, which again are going to be values. My amplitude changes if there's a number in front of sine or cosine. It's like if it was 2 sine or 2 cosine, my amplitude would change. And if there's a number right in front of x, or it may be written is a times the sine of b theta because when we talk about radians normally we don't say x we say theta but it'll be that number in front of your degree measure so once i start figuring out the pieces i can start seeing what those things are actually going to change within my graph so here's how this is going to go i can zoom some more let me flip over. i can actually do it here a little bit more i think i can do a little more
So we've just looking at theta. Now, if we flip over, we're gonna start taking this in little bite-sized pieces. What happens, and I'm gonna come back out here for a minute because I definitely need to be able to get this note here. What happens when the period changes, okay? So we've got our initial y equals sine of x, just like you had on the front. The period was 360 degrees, 2 pi, because pi is 180. So now, and again, remember, pi over 2 would just be like 180 divided by 2. So this is like my 90 degrees. Pi is like 180 degrees. 3 pi over 2 would be 3 times 180, which would be 540 divided by 2, which would be 270 degrees, and 2 pi would bring me full circle to 360. Now here's why that's important. We're going to take special note of the values at each radian, or in this case, degree mark. We're going to look at the degree and we're going to look at the value at that particular degree. Well, pi is 180. Yep, pi is always 180. So, when I'm at zero, at zero degrees, my value of my sine curve is zero. When I get to pi over two, today known as 90, my value is up to one. And as I continue to work my way along the curve, when I get to 180, that's zero. And I keep coming along. 270 is at negative one. And when I get back to 360, it's zero. That's the same base you're going to have every time you draw one of these. The only way these will change is if my amplitude changes. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But if you've got this down as your base, that's a good thing to have. Because when you see in the next section, it's going to make this simple. So now, let's look at y equals sine of 2 theta. In other words, my B value is now 2. Okay, my period is going to change. So here's how it changes. My period now is going to be 360 divided by whatever number is in front of theta. So in this case, 2. So my period now is 180 degrees. It's squishing my graph in some ways. So here's how this is going to work one typo to take care of. Instead of saying we multiply the degree measure, it should say divide there. So we are going to divide the degree measure by 2 in this case, because that's my B value. We always divide by the B. And use that to make our table. So here's where this little table that I drew down here comes from. If you think about our original one up here, originally in my base graph, okay, so my base degrees were 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. But we're cutting that period in half. We're cutting it down to 180. So all of my degree values that I'm using also get cut in half. Well, if you cut 0 in half, you still get 0. So that's not moving. But if I cut what used to be my 90 degree angle in half, it turns into 45. If I cut my 180, it turns into 90. Cut 270 in half becomes 135. Cut 360, it becomes 180, and notice now my range is from 0 to 180, exactly what it's supposed to be for this period. But here's the thing that's cool. My values don't change. They just move. So before, when I was at 0, I had 0. When I was at 90, I had a value of 1. Well, that's going to become 45's value now. 180 was at 0 that becomes 90's value. 135 becomes negative 1, and 180 becomes 0. Notice the right side of my chart hasn't changed at all, and it's not going to unless there's an amplitude change. The only thing that my period changes is the degree measure that my values are found at. Because what'll happen now when I go to graph this, if I bump it up a little here, so now I go, okay, so at zero, I'm going to plot zero. Okay, so zero, I've got zero. 
At 45, I go up to 1. Okay, I'll come way up here to 1. I don't know why I made 1 that high. At 90, I go back to 0. At 135, I go down to negative 1. And at 180, I go back up to 0. And I'm drawing a curve that goes through there. Now, I notice first that it's more squished than when I just had sine of x. If you even look at the graph right above it and then this one, you're like, yeah, it's kind of getting compacted here. If I wanted to keep going, the pattern doesn't change at all. So like here, I'd be like, okay, so when I'm 0, it looks like next, let's see, that'd be 225. I could just go back up to 1, and then it would come down, and then it would go down to negative 1 and go up. Once you see that first part of the pattern, you could extend this as many periods as you want. Even No, unless you're told to go to a certain period, complete through two periods, complete through 360 degrees, whatever it is, my graph here, if I was just doing it for a single period, would just be that part. Okay. So whenever we're doing period changes, it's that number in front of theta, just divide your base degree measures, your 0, 90, 180, 270, 360 from your base graph, divide them by that, and that's going to give you your new degrees. The values aren't going to move on us. Now before I go, do you get or do you, I want to do one more, just because sometimes it's the initial set in that makes things kind of tricky. So let's flip over here. We're going to do one more, strictly based with period changes. So again, there's my base graph. And just like before, 90, 180, 270, 360, because those are our five base measures we're going to be using. So just like before, now I'm going to take a look at this newbie. So it says y equals the sine of 1 half x. Sometime this may also be written this way. Actually, you can. Okay, It may also be written as sine is theta over 2. That would still be like 1 half. So when I go to do my period, if we kept going like we talked about in the first one, we do 360 divided by a half. But it was also just mentioned, well, can I just multiply by 2 then? Yeah, because dividing by a half and multiplying by 2 is the same thing. So my period now is going to be 720 degrees. And again, I did the same boneheaded thing on this page. So whether you divide all of your degrees by 1 half or you multiply them all by 2, think again back to your initial values. My initial values are 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. And if you divide each of them by a half, or multiply by 2, 90 divided by a half is 180. 180 divided by a half, or times 2, is 360. 170, I mean, excuse me, 270 turns into 540. 360 turns into 720. And as long as that last value matches up with this, ooh, we're good. Then you did something wrong. So then here, my values continue to stay the same. And you'll notice what I believe to be my final boneheaded thing in playing with this packet. I didn't make a long enough x-axis for all these to fit, so we're going to stretch this a little. So when I get here, squished becomes extended, I'm going to plot my points. Notice we just don't move off of that zero with sine. So at way out at 180, we're up to 1. Then we're out to 360 before we get back to 0. And then at 540, 
we're down to negative 1. And at 7.20, we finish our period back to 0. So that compared to the other one, now we're really starting to stretch it out or extend it. And it all depends on what I'm dividing by, what my B value is, whether I'm extending or condensing my period. So I want to put a little bit of a summary down here and then see if there's anything we've got an issue on so far. Let me bump this up a little more here so we can still see that. So here's our summary. If my period value, again, it's that B number, the value in front of my theta, is greater than 1, I'm going to have a shorter period. I'm going to get a squishy graph. It's going to be condensed. If my period value is less than 1, okay, so it's like a fraction of sorts, that's going to be a longer period, bless you, and it's going to be stretched out. But again, that's strictly looking at that B value that messes with my period. Base value of a period is 360, so if it doesn't have a number in front, it stays 360. But otherwise, those are the ways it can change. Yes, sir? <coughs> If it's sine, yes, unless there's an amplitude change. Now, we haven't done cosine yet. We're getting there. But that would be, but it still would have its base values too, okay? So we haven't talked really about the amplitude yet. That's what we're going to do next. So... Uh-huh. Because, again, we extended or stretched back here. When that B value is there, when that half was there, okay, that messes with my period. Because now my period stretched when I divided by that one half all the way out to 720. So every one of those degree measures that I have in my base, I divided them by a half. So all of these numbers get bigger because when you divide by a fraction, you get a larger value. So you graph the bigger ones with that. Yep. So now amplitude, and then we'll kind of start putting it all together here. What happens when the amplitude changes? What happens when there's a number in front of my sine or cosine? Yeah, it's going to. So here's how this is going to work. So again, here's my base graph with sine. Well, now what happens if I get 3 sine of theta? So here's my typical, my degrees didn't change because I didn't have any change in my period, so it's still 0 to 360. My values for my sine didn't change, but now when I have 3 in front, that means I'm going to take all of my base sine values and multiply them by 3. Well, when you have zeros, zeros aren't going to change. Zeros are still going to be 0, but those ones that are 1, I now multiply by 3. Negative 1 gets multiplied by negative 3. And so when I go to graph, I'm graphing with these degree measures, but these values. So 0 stays at 0. When I get to 90, oh, hardy. Jeez. I don't want to go that high. I'm tweaking this here. So if I make this my 1, 2, and 3, my 90 would be at 3. My 180 is back to 0. My 270 is down to negative 3. And 360 is back to 0. It gets taller. The period itself didn't change, but I went further up to get to that maximum point and further down to get to that minimum point is what happened here. Because I didn't want, I'm going to wipe this out so we don't even see it because then we won't think about it. Because I didn't have my 1, 2, I didn't have my 3 ready and I didn't feel like making my graph go like through the top of the page. That was a little overdone. So let me get the, the old numbers out of there so we can just be looking at the new ones here. 
but it's just going to go up or down that way. And if it was fractional, it might make it shorter. Whole numbers are going to make it larger. So as it says down at the bottom, basically the amplitude just multiplies each of our values and adds value to our graph. Okay? But are we ever going to have a time where the amplitude and the period changes? Yes, like right now. So, oh gee, as we flip over, we'll get another amplitude one in here before we go crazy and start doing everything together. So, all right. So I get here. Do I have a period change in number one? No, there's nothing in front of my theta. So I'm going to keep drawing these charts. If you get to a point where you're like, I don't need that chart, that's okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, so my degrees and my value, my degrees, if they're not changing, are going to be these five. Unless I see a change in my period, that's what we're going to be. So if there was a number in front of it, like there will be a number two, that's going to change these. Now, in a t oh, it's just stretch, I was going to say. So typically my values here, like we said before, with sine are 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. That would be my base sine graph. But, so even though my period didn't change, it was still 360 degrees, because that's what a base sine graph is. What's my amplitude on this one? 4. Which means I'm going to take those values I'm going to multiply them all by 4. Yes, you absolutely could. Yep. Yeah, this is going to be one of those sections that I'm going to have several of you doing this different ways, and I'm going to try to keep up with it. Because some of you are going to want to look at this and go, I know the amplitude's 4. I'm just going to multiply by 4 here right away. Because I don't even want to look at this. What's that? Yeah, the zeros will still stay zeros. The amplitude is just going to change where my ones were. I'm not required to draw the graphs. So. Oh, yeah, we're drawing the graphs. Not the graph, the, uh, the no. no. But for some of these, I think once you start to see them, I think you're going to want to. So, like for instance, here I've got 0 at 0. At 90, I'm going to be all the way up to 4. At 180, I'm back to 0. 270, I'm down to negative 4. And 360, I'm back up to zero. And again, if you want to draw beyond the one period, you can, or if you're asked to, but otherwise I'm fine with you just drawing a single period for these. Okay? And that's it. It's as straightforward as that. Just okay, with my curve, and I'm done. But like I was mentioning a little bit earlier, what happens when both things are going on? Okay? Whenever that happens, we're going to deal with the period first, and we're going to deal with the amplitude second. So, what's my period going to be this time? Well, whatever my B value is, is what I'm dividing that by. So my period's going to be 180. This is going to get squished. So remember, whatever you divide by in your period is what you're going to divide your base angles by. So when I go to make my degrees, okay, instead of going through these, they're all going to be cut in half. So 90 will become 45. 180 will become 90. 270 is going to be 135, and we'll deal with the graph issue here in a minute. I've got this one on here on purpose so we can adjust. And 360 divided by whatever we divide by here gets me my degree. And again, I ended with what my period should be, and that's the way it should work each time. So once I have that, now I'm ready to come up with my values. Now I know the values would still be 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. But I have an amplitude. What's my amplitude? 3. 
So whatever those typical values are, and we want to be careful here because I almost just made a slip, but I caught it. What's also different about this one? It's cosine. Okay, so this time I am going to add the second one of these because we haven't done a cosine one here in a minute. If it was plain cosine, remember, we would start at 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. Those are my base values for cosine. And again, you've got those back a little bit earlier in the packet. Now I can do my amplitude. We won't start getting fancy until we at least looked at each one once. So multiply each of your values by 3, and you'll use the degree and your amplitude values to make your graph. Now you're like, okay, they gave us a weird messed up graph because they counted by 60s, and we have 45s and 135s and all of this. Well, we are going to cheat slightly here. And we are going to use those middle numbers as our 45 degree parts. So if you can't see towards the back, my first blank line is 45. The second one is 90. And that last one is 135. And again, once I get those in, so I'm going to be at 0, 3. At 45, I'm going to be at 0. At 90, I'm going to be at negative 3. At 135, I'm going to be back to 0. And at 180, I'm going to be back up to 3. And it's going to basically almost look like a parabola since we're only dealing with one cycle. Again, if I wanted to keep going, I could keep that exact same pattern going and just work my oops, I skipped the line. And just work my way through to the end of this. But again, that's going to be dependent on how comfortable you're feeling. If you only want to go through one cycle unless it asks for more one period, that's okay. I won't I'll jump up and down and scream and yell and be crazy. 45, 90, and 135. And that's the reason I gave you a piece of graph paper with this today. Because when you go to make your scales, I wouldn't make my scale until I knew what this was, and then I would just make that my scale. Because, well, that's just going to be simpler to work with. But I want to keep kind of playing with this whole thing of doing both at once. So I'm going to skip number three. I'm going to go to number four. And again, we're sticking just to degrees today. Tomorrow we'll play with the radians. All right, two things to keep track of here. The period and the amplitude. All right, what's our period going to be this time? 720, because it's 360 divided by a half. Because we talked about before, if it's pi, if it's pi if it's theta over 2, that's like 1 half theta. So I'm dividing by the 1 half, so my period is 720 degrees. My amplitude is 2, but I always do that second. So I go to start making my chart. And again, I'm going to highly suggest this for most of you here, at least at the start. Thinking about your base, we said dividing by 2 is like multiplying. Bleh. Dividing by 1 half is multiplying by 2. i got to quit slipping up here. Doesn't change 0. Okay. 90 times 2 would be 180. 180 times 2 is 360. 270 times 2 is 540. And 360 times 2 is 720. Again, I end up with my period value at the end. Now again, some of you may be comfortable enough at this point to just do your amplitude, multiply them, and go. If you are, great. If you aren't, always look to see what trig function you're doing. Okay, sine 
gets me back to where I'm doing this one. And maybe till you get comfortable with it, that's a good idea. But then my one with the amplitude, okay, I'm multiplying those values by two. The zeros will stay zeros. And I multiply those other two, and it's my degree and my amplitude columns that I want to use when I'm plotting my points. So zero will stay at zero. Okay, and e, maybe at this point even you want to get that out of there just so you don't think about it. 180 will go up to two. 360 is back down to zero. 540 is down to negative two. And 720 is back to zero. And again, If you wanted to keep going and fit, you can. Mr. Hardy, can you show me the rich and Okay. Okay. But that's all we're up to on these. And you can get some really weird ones. I'm just going to warn you. They're like, how weird? Uh, six is going to be kind of weird. Yeah, because here you're like, okay, the amplitude's not a big deal. That's two. We've, we've dealt with that. But, ooh, one-third theta for my period. Okay. So if I divide 360 by one-third, that's the same as multiplying by three. 1,080 degrees for a single period. So we're really going to stretch this out. So... My degree measures are all going to be multiplied by 3. Same as dividing by a third. 0 still doesn't get to change. 90 times 3 is 270. 180 times 3 is 540. 270 times 3 is 810. And 360 times 3, there's my 1080. It's cosine this time. So where am I going to be starting? One. Well, one for the time being. Because that's always the way my cosines run. But then you're right. My amplitude, my times two, is going to multiply all of those values. And then I can kind of get rid of that so I know I'm not plotting those. So at 0, I got me a 2. At 270, again, we are going to cheat. At 270, I got a 0. At 540, which would be this next empty line that I have, would be negative 2. 810, again, we will cheat. Is 0. And 1080. going to be 2. Hence the negativity of having pre-made graphs instead of making your own. Now, the only thing that we are going to add tomorrow is going to end up being that we're going to start putting this stuff into radians instead of degrees. So here's, here's the task at hand for now. It's not everything I've got written up there. It's actually going to be somewhat shorter here. All right. 4, 6, 9 through 11. That's it for right now. Everything you can do in degrees. Actually, on 4, 6, and 9, they're just asking you to find the amplitude and period. That'll take you about two seconds. For 10 and 11, sketch your graphs out. Make your chart, whatever it happens to be. For those two, okay, so this is going to be the Tuesday part. Okay. Only on Tuesday may you graph in degrees. Starting tomorrow when we knock the rest of this out, and I'll put this back up, so you really only need that top part, but I'm going to put it here for reference anyway. When we knock the rest of these out tomorrow, we will be doing our graphs in radian mode. Um. 
Yes, I will go along with that. So yeah, this technical drop, the drop dead due date for, to be on time will be Friday. Third, by Thursday, we'll have all the answers up, but by Friday will be the, the end all be all. Ooh, I gotta erase some stuff. 